100, both AGCL and AGI dissolve in NH3. And then we have letter B. What mass of AGCL dissolves in 1.0 liters of a 1.0 molar solution of NH3? Okay, so in order to answer this question, I did have to go in the back of the textbook to find out a couple of things. The first thing is that they're asking for mass of AGCL. That means that I'm searching for the grams, right? Mass equals grams of AGCL. So they're telling me that it's dissolving in a solution. And I've, I've seen this a couple of times this chapter, right? AGCL is selectively soluble. So it has a KSP value. So that's what I went and got at the back of the book. So the KSP for AGCL is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 10th. But what's a KSP without its balanced equation? So let's just write that out quickly. So remember, with KSPs, you always start with your compound. So in this case, we have AGCL. That's a solid. And it kind of makes sense because you're looking for the mass, right? Solid, that would be like a precipitate. And we're breaking it down into its two ions, Ag plus aqueous plus Cl minus. I knew these charges because you could either do the crisscross method here, or Ag is always going to be a plus one, and Cl, when combined with the metal, that's always going to be a negative one. So there's a couple of different ways to do that. Okay, so the first one is done. Now I have to figure out... Well, I'm in this ammonia solution, NH3 is ammonia. But if I have ions of Ag plus and Cl minus, specifically Ag plus will bind with NH3 to form a complex ion, right? It has the two components, Ag and NH3, they go together. So I went in the back of the textbook to find that formation constant, Kf. Now I knew that it was Ag NH3 two, because that was the only one in the back of the textbook with Ag and NH3. But let's just write that balance equation. Remember, Kf means that I'm forming this compound. So the two individual parts are now on the left side. So I have Ag, that's now going to be plus, that's aqueous, plus ammonia, NH3. And this one for all your Kfs, that's also aqueous ammonia. This will come to equilibrium and form the complex ion Ag NH3 2 plus, and that's also aqueous. So I'm just going to bring that Kf value down here. I can erase this. Now I just need to balance this one. I do see that I have two NH3s, so I just have to put a 2 in front of the NH3 here. But now here's the problem once I bring this up, right? The problem is they're asking for AgCl but it needs to dissolve in NH3. Well, here's the AgCl, but it's not in the same equation as the NH3. If I'm showing something that happens, these two guys have to be in the same equation. So how are we gonna do that? Well, let's just add these two equations together. Pretty simple enough. Now, remember, ooh, what happened here? Okay, bye and bye. Now, remember, when you're adding equations, Things that are similar on opposite sides cancel out. So I have one Ag plus on the right here and one Ag plus on the left here. So goodbye, don't need that anymore. Nothing else that I could cancel, so I'm just gonna bring the two equations together. AgCl solid plus two NH3. Aqueous, this yields Ag, NH3, 2 plus, plus Cl minus, and that's aqueous. Now remember, when you're adding your two equations, we do not add the KSPs and the K values. You always multiply these values. So I'm going to take the 1.6 times 10 to the negative 10th and times it by 1.7 times 10 to the 7th and I'm gonna get my new K value for just this equation. So let's see, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 10th times 1.7 times 10 to the seventh. And I get, oh boy, I, <laughs> I already know this is not gonna be good. 2.72 <laughs> times 10 to the negative three. 
I don't like this exponent. And I'll tell you why in a little bit. Now, the only thing that they told us was that we started off with a one liter solution of a 1.0 molarity NH3. So this is my initial concentration, right? That's what this AGCL was in. So once we know that we have initial, I have to write an ice table. So let's go for it. Whoop, hold on. Much better. Okay, so I, C, E. We initially started with the NH3. Now don't be tempted that because I have a two here, I'm gonna multiply this 1.0 times two. Mm -mm. This is all you got. You can't just miraculously times it by two just because of a balanced equation. That's just for ratios, but whatever you have, that's what you got. So I'm gonna say that I have 1.0 molarity for my NH3. Keep in mind that solids don't care for KSP values, so that goes bye-bye. And I didn't start off with any of my complex ion or Cl minus. So I'm just gonna put zero and zero. And then remember, for change, you could only go up where you have nothing. So this side has to be positive, plus x, plus x, and this side has to be minus, right? And this would be minus 2x, because the two is in front there. Equilibrium, you just combine them all together, so this would be 1.0 minus 2x, this would be x, and this would be x. And now we have these two things going on together. And actually, I think this actually will work out nicely. Whew, thank God. We'll see, we'll see. Anywho, so let's write that K expression. So I'm just gonna write it over here. K equals, we have the two products and the one reactant on the bottom, right? We have the complex ion, AG, NH3, two plus, times the Cl minus divided by the NH3, and that's raised to the second. So I'm going to say that the K value is, uh, what was it? Oh yeah, 2.72 times 10 to the negative third. This was X, this is X, and this is 1.0 minus 2X. Let's plug it all in. 2.72 times 10 to the negative third equals, we got two things on the top, we got one thing on the bottom, x times x divided by 1.0 minus 2x. And this is squared, because I have a square here, okay. Now let's just simplify the top, right? X times X is just X squared. So let's just deal with that first. Now, generally we do like to simplify here, right? And say, oh gosh, I don't wanna do the quadratic. So I will get rid of the minus two X and see if our assumption is correct. And that's what I was alluding to in a little bit while ago when I looked at this value and I said, oh boy, this is, this is way too small to assume. However, there's a silver lining here. There's a little trick here that you could do mathematically. If you have both the numerator and the denominator squared, like we do here, we can do the square root on both sides. And whatever you do on that side, you gotta do on this side. The squares will cancel out. And then we keep in that minus two X, and this will be like the real answer. So now we have something that's x over 1.0 minus 2x because that got rid of the exponent on both sides. Now let's just take the square root of 2.72 times 10 to the negative third. It's a long decimal, so I'll try to keep it as much as I can. 0 0.05215. Four, that's good enough. Okay, now we're going to distribute. 
this times by this, right? So I'm just going to work up here now. I have 0 0.052154 times 1 minus 2x, or maybe I'll just say 1.0 minus 2x equals x. Distribute. So it'd be 0 0.052154 minus 0 0.052154 times 2. I get 0 0.104308, and that's x, and this equals x. So now we just go back to regular algebra, put all the x's on one side. So I'm going to plus 0 0.104. 104308x, and I'll do that on the other side. 0 0.10, oh boy. <laughs> Maybe I'll, okay, plus 0 0.04308x. This cancels. And now you're left with 0 0.052154 equals, remember this x had a one in front. So it's one plus this value. So I'm just going to have that number in the calculator. 1.104308x. Oh my goodness. Solve for x. We just divide by that number. 1.104308. 1 1.104308. This cancels. And now we're going to get x equals. Okay. So 0 0.052154 divided by that number is 0 0.047228, we'll say. And that's molarity. Okay. Now, is this the answer? Well, no, because I'm still looking for that mass. I just found a molarity. But what molarity is this? I want to find the molarity of AgCl. So I do have AgCl in my equation. Even though it had nothing to do with um, k values, you still have a molarity for it. And if you notice, there was a 1 in front of the AgCl. This we solved for 1x. So the x value goes with the AgCl. So now I know that I have 0 0.04. Four seven, four seven, two two eight. Molarity of AgCl. Well, I want a mass, right? Well, they did tell me that I was in one liters, and molarity with liters—that's molarity equals moles divided by liters. And if we're trying to solve for moles, all we would do is take our molarity and times it by our liters. But if my liters is just one, anything times one is the same number. So I have 0 0.047228 moles of AgCl. They want mass, so all we have to do is just go to grams of AgCl. How do we do that? Well, moles to grams, that's the periodic table, right? We just times by the molar mass. So I got to go on the periodic table and find out what the molar mass is of AgCl. So 107.9 plus 35.45. We're just going to times that number by 143.35. As I write an 8. That's great. That rhymed. How fine. Anyway. <laughs> Back to chem. Okay. So this times 0 0.047228. And now two sig figs. So I get 6.8. 6.8 grams of AgCl. That is going to precipitate. And that is the final answer. Whoop, whoop. Okay. What'd you think? I really hope this helps. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. And I hope you all are having a great day out there. Let's keep studying hard. And I will talk to you later. Okay, bye-bye.